Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Engineering DIY. If you remember from last episode, which you can check out over here, I modified the front cassette on my bicycle so that I could freewheel around the pedals. In this episode, I'll now be installing this crank set on the bicycle, doing some testing by shifting gears when normally pedaling, and finally mount the motor onto the bicycle and test it under full motor power while also shifting gears. So before I start all of that, I had to fix an issue that I made, and that is that um, this cap here is screwed onto the ring nut, and the ring nut is welded onto the pedal. And so when I screwed on the uh, the cassette onto uh, this cap, it just became undone. Uh, so I should have seen this coming, but instead of screwing it on this time, I'll just have to weld it in. So it's an easy fix. Alrighty, so I finished welding on the end cap to the rest of the pedal. So now it's time to screw the crank, uh, the freewheeling crank set onto here, and then attach this onto the bicycle. Okay, so if we try to fit the modified uh, crank onto the OEM square tapered, tapered spindle, you'll probably find that it's now too short, or there's very little engagement between the square taper and the square cut hole in the crank. And that's because since we welded the cup on, that obviously extends the distance. So that's why the next thing I'm going to do is create an extended axle so that the square taper could uh, fit could protrude further out from the bottom bracket than it is now. Okay, so in order to figure out how much longer the modified axle will have to be, I have the normal axle, or spindle rather, mounted here in the vise, and I have the dry side end cap and the, the bearing inside, and I just plopped it down there, and this distance here represents the actual distance um, that the spindle sticks out from the bike bottom bracket where to be mounted on the bike. Um, so I'm going to mount the freewheeling cassette on top of this, and I could feel it just barely engaging. Um, obviously the distance is way too great for the original bolt that screwed this onto the spindle to even reach and screw into the spindle. Um, but this arrangement allows me to take my caliper and use the depth gauge to pretty much uh, figure out how deep down the end of the spindle is. Reference from the the surface where the bolt um, presses against the crank. Alrighty, so according to my caliper, I need to make the um, spindle longer by 0 0.773 inches. I'm going to cut um, from this old spindle that I have lying around, um, somewhere over here, uh, to the left of the bearing support here. I'll cut that part out, and then on the actual spindle that is going to be in the bike eventually. Um, I'm going to cut at this line right here and then weld the section that I cut from that old spin spindle um, onto um, this face right here. 
and that should um, allow the axle or spindle to be extended to the correct length. Um, it's important to note that um, the spindle that you end up using uh, don't modify the length between these two bearing supports because that's um, how the end caps on the bottom bracket keep the spindle in alignment and say if you lengthen this distance or shorten it uh, then it just won't fit in the bicycle anymore. So now it's time to weld these two parts together. Now um, the main issue is that obviously since I've hand ground both of these surfaces here, um, when I weld them together they might not be square to each other and the entire thing might be bent and wobbling around. Um, so I look for a solution um, so that both parts could be aligned with each other and so I found that the uh, ODs or the outer diameters of these um, bearing supports on both parts are exactly the same. So let's say if I drop them down a tube that has the same um, ID as the OD of these um, bearing supports, that means when they're inside the pipe they'll be perfectly parallel with each other and um, not skewed because the pipe restricts their um, motion. And so I looked around for a suitable pipe and I found this which is actually a bicycle seat post and it so happened that the ID of this pipe perfectly fits or as is really really close fit um, the OD of the bearing supports. Um, they kind of wobble around a tiny bit but in order to mitigate this I'll put some tape around the bearing supports to prevent that. Um, and so the plan is basically to drop uh, this part in first and now um, on it on this end here there is a factory um, uh, finish here which means that this should be very close to 90 degrees um, this edge um, in relation to the tube so since this only has one bearing support instead of two bearing supports on this other piece that means even though the ID is exactly the same it could still wobble around so I'm using this taper here and I'll drop this smaller piece in first and that smaller piece uh, stops a little bit um, upwards from this edge here and I'm going to use this with this is basically the bolt that's used to uh, screw the pedal onto uh, this spindle that I just dropped in and I'm using the sprocket as a washer and I'm going to screw that into the spindle I just spindle part that I just dropped in and tighten and as I tighten that will pull that spindle um, into perfect alignment with this um, factory ground finish over here and since this has two bearing supports here, that means it doesn't wobble or not as much anyway. So I'll drop that part down. And so I'll measure out where the where the two parts meet and I'll cut a little window there. And then that will give me access to join 
um, to weld the two parts together in order to join them. All right, now I have my window cut in. As you can see, now when I drop the part, it's the gap will be perfectly, the, uh, the end of the part is perfectly in the center of the gap. So now when I drop the second part in, I have a perfect window to weld the two parts together. I could look through the window and align these two together so that the black hours face, and that's how I know they're both rotationally and axially aligned. So I have everything all set up here in this in the pipe. Um, the only change I made was that I sawed off um, some of the length, uh, and that allows me to put this gigantic C clamp around um, and clamp down on the actual uh, spindle that's inside of here, and put everything inside the pipe in compression, so that will hold everything together and in place as I weld. Alright, so this is what the extended axle looks like now. Um, visually, uh, it seems like the pipe idea worked. I don't see any signs of misalignment. Uh, everything looks pretty straight. Um, so the next step would be to add a second layer of weld. Uh, now that um, this is already set and aligned, I could add another pair of, uh, another set of weld. Um, and after that, um, I'll grind down this third a bearing support here because it's not needed um, and then I'll be able to install it on the bike. Alrighty, so this is what the finished axle looks like. I also ground down the third bearing support that was over here because that was pretty much useless. And now that allows the end cap to slide smoothly over against the, uh, the actual bearing support that's going to be inside of the bottom bracket. So now I have a lot of extra length uh, on this side of the, on the drive side of the axle or the spindle. And that will allow it to mesh with the Feeling free wheeling cassette, and so now it's time to install it on the bike and see how it works. Alright, so in order to install the new uh, spindle, we have to take out the old one. Um, so we're going to re be removing it from the drive side, and on this side, there's an end cap which is left um, hand threaded, meaning it unscrews uh, by turning clockwise. So I'm going to use this uh, bicycle tool here um, that has the uh, exact uh, flat distance. Um, you could use a normal wrench, but the problem is since uh, the tool engagement is very shallow, as you can see, you might have a problem. It might be harder using an ordinary wrench, but uh, I'm not saying it's not possible, it just might be harder. Alrighty, so once the dry side cap comes off, you could pull out the axle. And make sure you recover both the bearings that are inside of the bottom bracket. So, there's already one uh, attached to or stuck inside of the bottom bracket here, so that's one. 
The other one is still inside the bracket, so I'm just going to use a pick to take it out, like so. And um, I'm going to re-grease uh, the bearings so that everything runs smoothly, and that mitigates the chance of rust forming. Alright, once that's done, you can take your new axle and then slide one bearing onto this end uh, and then another one onto this end over here. Make sure the side that uh, you extended is facing the drive side, obviously. Alright, now it's time to install the freewheeling crank. You may notice on this new axle that I made, on this end, uh, you have to screw in a bolt um, to secure it. Uh, and on the other end, it's like this, where there's already a stud, a threaded stud on the spindle, where you have to screw in not to secure it. The reason why it's better to go with uh, th this design, where you have to screw in a bolt instead of the nut, um, is because, let's say, if uh, the distance between the, the crank and the spindle is still too great. You could always just use a longer bolt than the one they give you to secure it versus if you use something like this and the the crank doesn't sit all the way, um, the distance is still too great, you can't really uh, have access to, to thread on the nut to secure it. Versus with this, you could just use a longer bolt. Alright, so the shifting handles on this bicycle are broken, so I have to install new ones. Alrighty guys, so now that I've modified the spindle so that the freewheeling crank could fit on and there is now a functioning shifting system on this bicycle, in the next video I'll be able to do physical testing um, by shifting gears and seeing if the freewheeling crank is uh, well aligned or not um, and rectify any issues that might pop up. Um, hopefully by the end of the next video I'll also be able to have a motor mounted to the bike and test the, uh, the power output with the motor um, with the gear setup that I have. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for part four.